testify. A genetics paper published less than a year before the trial had confirmed what has long been the most inflammatory part of Darwin's theory, the common ancestry of humans and apes. That paper explored a curious discrepancy in our chromosomes. The cells of all great apes, like chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans, contain 24 pairs of chromosomes. If humans share a common ancestor with apes, you'd expect us to have the same number. But surprisingly, human cells contain only 23 pairs. The question is, if evolution is right about this common ancestry idea, where'd the chromosome go? Well, evolution makes a testable prediction. And that is that somewhere in the human genome, we ought to be able to find a piece of scotch tape holding two chromosomes together so that our 24 pairs, two of them were pasted together to form just 23. And if we can't find that, then the hypothesis of common ancestry is wrong and evolution is mistaken. Next slide. To solve this riddle for the court, now, Miller would show how scientists discovered traces of our evolutionary past buried in the very structure of a chromosome carried by all humans. Typically, on the ends of every chromosome, you should find special genetic markers, or sequences of DNA, called telomeres. And in their middles, you should find different genetic markers called centromeres. But if a mutation occurred in the past, causing two pairs of chromosomes to fuse, we should find evidence in those genetic markers, telomeres not only at the ends of the new chromosome, but also at their middles, and not one, but two centromeres. Finding a structure like this in our chromosomes would explain why humans have one pair fewer than the great apes. And if we don't find that, then evolution is in trouble. Next slide. Lo and behold, the answer is in chromosome number two. All of the marks of the fusion of those chromosomes predicted by common descent in evolution, all those marks are present on human chromosome number two. So the case is closed in a most beautiful way. And that is, the prediction of evolution of common ancestry is fulfilled by that lead pipe evidence that you see here, in terms of tying everything together. That our chromosome, formed by the fusion from our common ancestor, is chromosome number two. Evolution has made a testable prediction, and it has passed. So modern genetics and molecular biology actually support evolutionary theory? They support it in great detail. And the closer we can get to looking at the details of the human genome, the more powerful that evidence has become. Darwin didn't even know about molecular biology and DNA, yet that's where some of the most profound evidence is, is being uncovered today. Think about that. That somebody in the 1800s made predictions that are being confirmed in molecular biology labs today. That's a very profound statement of a very successful theory.